Just getting everybody in two lines if we can down there. If you mind, thank you. Can you come Can over? Get lining up over there. Can you come over? Can we get a line over something? Thank you all.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, those who have got seats, if you could take the seats, please, those who have seats, and if we can have a, a hush across the room so everybody can hear. There are lots of people outside on this uh, next building and also outside listening on speakers, so I'd like them to be able to hear the service. So if everyone could just be sitting by and pay tribute to Mark today. Has anybody got control of the mic over there? Good. I don't know whether I don't know where they go. Is there any way you can turn the mic up? Yeah, pull it closer to you. Yeah, I mean, I was a midget for this book. Okay, good afternoon and welcome, especially to the family and to Manny and to Mark. Before I begin, there's a couple of things I just want to take care of. And that, what is language like that while we're here? Okay, can I, can I call for calm, please? Can I call for calm, ladies and gentlemen? Lots of respect, Chief, lots of respect. Thank you. Thank you. Before I begin, I want to make sure that all of your mobile phones are turned off. So I want you to check them. I don't want you to just second guess. I want you to get them out of your pocket and switch them off. And make sure they're on silent. Because I don't want to be interrupted and I don't want to disrespect the tribute that I want to pay to Mark on behalf of his friends and family today. Okay, if we're all sure, we're here today to celebrate the life of Mark Peter Winkless. I'm sure that everyone here, whatever your own beliefs, will agree that we should do our very best to live a good life and to support others to do so also. These are values we all share as human beings, so people of all faiths and those of none are welcome here today. In the course of the ceremony, we will hear stories from Mark's life, some videos and music, and there will be time for reflection, and you can remember what Mark in your own way or in terms of your own faith. Mark's family are, of course, experiencing a huge sense of loss. But I'm sure they draw some comfort from the presence of all of you who have come today to say your farewells. It is much appreciated that you are here. We all know that in order for there to be life, there must be death. Death is one certainty in our lives. It comes to us all and we should not fear it. Nevertheless, it is always overwhelmingly sad and shocking when someone dies so suddenly as Mark did. It's right and natural that you should grieve because your sorrow is a measure of your love and affection for him. Though you will always miss Mark, you will always have fond memories too, which you will take into the future. And that will give him a kind of immortality which I know he would have liked. Even when life is cut short, and even when a life has had difficulties such as Mark's, there is much for us to celebrate. As you remember Mark's life today, perhaps you will feel able to smile at memories of good times, even while you grieve his loss. Mark loved dressing up, but what he did in his own time was his own business. <laughs> we 
He also loved animals as long as they were stuffed and on his wall. <laughs> He also loved music, as you know, and we couldn't fit in everything that was suggested for his funeral, but most of his favourites were played on the parade, the carnival, what you, want, what you want to call it, making its way here today. And I'm sure we'll go on into the night this evening, and there will be some sore heads tomorrow of that, I am sure. Today is being labelled as the great British send-off great British man. Mark Peter Winkless, known to many as Winx. Mark was born at Leicester Royal Infirmary on the 11th of November 1980 and sadly passed on the 25th of May age 40. He was and is the son of Billy and Pete, a grandson to Bill and Dot, a father to Sherelle, Manny, soulmate to Erica, the mother of his children, and known at his request as G-Dad, <laughs> to Montea, and that's with an accent on the E. <laughs> a brother to Bobby, Charlie, Carly, Declan, Phil, Liam, Jody, and Megan. A stepson to Winx and Jane, also Justin, AKA Juggy. A nephew to Carl, an uncle to many, and last but not least, a friend to all that knew him. Some of you may be wondering who I am and what connection do I have to Mark. My name is Johnny Kinch. Uh, it says on here Jonathan, but that's normally just when I'm in court. Uh, <laughs> but I wish with all my heart, as I'm sure that you do, that I was not here. That Mark was still alive. Yet with a heavy heart, I must believe it's true. And do my best to honour Mark, and do his family and his friends proud today. I met Mark a few years ago at a night of boxing. He wasn't actually doing any of the boxing in the audience that night, thankfully. <laughs> and I was introduced to him by Elvis, which is not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. <laughs> Mark was a flamboyant character. Yeah. And it may be a cliche, but he, he actually was larger than life. I saw him again at various events and we got to know each other a little better each time. One time we got chatting on and I mentioned that I was a writer, an actor and a, a director. And Mark was wanting to get back into that kind of thing. And I said, well, let's keep in touch and we swap numbers. I think from that day forward, there wasn't more than a couple of days of us not speaking. As if he would answer his phone. Which he hardly ever did. For whatever reason, as the months went by, he began to trust me more and more and would open up about his mental health problems and other issues. I too had had a breakdown five years ago and a family history of mental health. I knew the difficulties, so I listened to his cries for help. I reached out to him and comforted him during times of pain, when he would allow, because he wouldn't always allow. 
We formed a close bond over the last two years and I considered him a close friend. And I will not and I cannot ever forget him. He was unique. And if you believe as I do, that we are not bodies having a temporary spiritual experience, but we are rather, in essence, spirits having a temporary physical experience, then you too will know that this is not the end of the spirit of Mark Weeks, but just the beginning of another journey that one day we will take ourselves and join him there. And let's face it, if he is on another planet, which he was a lot of the time, He wanted to look different, and that was a way of expressing how he felt inside. Yes, he may have had difficult times, and he may have been the cause of others' difficult times. <laughs> but no one is perfect. And do we smash down a stained glass window just because one crack is in the corner? No, we let the light shine through. Over the few years I knew him, he was a man that was trying and desperately at times to make the right decisions, to make the right changes, and he did in fact make headway. I was due to work alongside him in a, an award-winning film later this year, but in the meantime I decided to make a short film called Lot. And at the last minute, because I knew it would lift Mark's spirits, I wrote him into it. He was very grateful. He came alive on set. He loved being in front of the camera, whether that was at home, or whether that was on set. He certainly wasn't shy. But underneath all the bravado and all the extravagance was to me a gentleman with a hot coal. I was actually editing his scene in the film and had been looking at his images for the last few days. I'd only spoken to him a few days before and he had messaged me pictures of him on another set, production that he was on with Jody, that's here today. I messaged back saying, and I quote, nice, have a great day, I'm editing you. And he replied, good my friend, I want a big year this year. And the last thing he sent me was a heart emoji. All that flashed through my mind whilst I was driving to the Lesson Hall Infirmary. When I got there, I was greeted by his family, who I had not met, with warmth. And eventually when we went in together, the room was full. And I, along with the staff there, have never seen an outpouring of love and will from one to another to live that was happening in that room that day. All of us holding him and kissing him, talking to him, trying desperately to will him awake. But it wasn't to be. I can't recall what everyone was saying, but one phrase was said that summed it up for me, and that was said by Elvis. And he was at his bedside, tears streaming down his face. I'll never forget, just out the corner of my eye, he just nudged his hand and said, You silly sausage. <laughs> Mark did not want to die, but he struggled knowing how to live. 
And that's what I've been calling Mark in my head over and over as I've had to prepare for today. Where's them cables? You silly sausage. Got to make these videos, you silly sausage. I've just been having that as a term of endearment towards him. Just a way of expressing as Elvis did on that day. And as I've also carried on looking at him on screen, this time, sadly, not editing the movie, but editing the videos for his funeral. And it just shouldn't be. No one but Mark could ever know the struggles he faced. No one could ever judge him for the decisions he made. He died before his time, and this short poem reflects that. We cannot judge a biography or a book by its length, nor by the number of its pages. We must, put, we must judge it by the richness of its contents. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most poignant. We cannot judge a song by its duration, nor by the number of its notes. We must judge it by the way it touches and lifts our souls. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most beautiful. And when something has enriched our life, and when its melody lingers on in our heart, is it finished or is it endless? I like to believe that it's endless. Mark helped more people than even he knew. And I had many messages from people I do not know after Mark passed. And I'm going to read out two of them now. And these two people never knew Mark. Mark didn't know them. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. A young man called Sam Trickett, a family man, by a messenger. Hi, Johnny. These are his words. So sorry to hear about your friend Mark. I hope it's okay to message you with the shock of the news about Mark. I didn't know Mark personally. Never met him. He didn't know me. But I was following him on social media for the past 12 months. After having found him on Instagram through mutual friends, I noticed that he had lived a bit of a life. And since following him, a lot of his posts and shares were around improving oneself, physically and mentally. And even though I didn't know him, I enjoyed watching his content and taking notes. He inspired me. When I saw your share, the shocking news, my first thoughts were about his little boy. I'm sure he has lots of wonderful people around him. I just want to offer my condolences to the family. I don't know why I contacted you with this message, but just the news was so sad, I wanted to get it off my chest. And another gentleman, Paul Head, via messenger, so sorry to hear this. Strangers become family when you support the same football team. I'll never forget what he did for my daughter when something happened to her that made me question my faith in humanity. He helped restore that faith and I saw in him an absolute heart of gold. Mark did have a heart of gold. That's the way I remember him. It's now time to move on to some members of the family with their eulogies. So I'd like to welcome up to the front to address you all, Billy. Please give her a round of applause. Christian King and Phil Murray. 
If heaven had a phone, I'd call you everywhere. If heaven had a phone, I'd hear your voice, know you're okay. I just want to speak to heaven. Do you have a direct line? Operator says number unknown. If heaven had a phone Okay, I'd like to call Declan now to come and give his share.
Erica, I didn't mean to disappoint you. And the meant to cause you pain. Thank you. 
that we'll all carry with us for the rest of our lives, those that know and love him. May you, his family and friends, build on the pain of separation to strengthen each other, to face the ongoing tasks of life with courage and with love for each other and remembrance of the goodness and happy hours you share. I hope you have gained some comfort from being here together. As you return to your work, your homes, and your routines of daily lives, remember how you felt sharing this moment together. Take away with you your own memories of Mark and may his place in your lives stay strong. Keep remembering him, because by doing so you are paying him the greatest tribute. I'm sure the family would like me to thank once again you all for being here today to support them and remember Mark and also give a huge thanks to Paul Pendle's son, all their staff for the amazing job they have done. You are all to join the family and friends at Overtown Football Club for the wake at 4pm today. If you don't know where it is, just ask Elvis, he knows everything. <laughs> this is a, an impromptu prayer, I would like to say, as a former minister. Mark wasn't a particularly spiritual guy. But I just want to say a prayer from me, from my heart, to his family. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just pray that you look after his family, that you bring them a sense of comfort and you wrap them in your arms. Welcome, Mark, Father, into heaven, where there is no more pain, no more heartache, no more sorrow. May you rest in peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. and leave in an orderly manner. Mark will now be leaving to go to his. Um, go, go, go anywhere. Let me just finish what I'm saying and then I'll, I'll carry on. So don't just go anywhere this year. But as we leave, let the family go first. After the gentleman carry Mark out, then please be patient and leave in an orderly manner. Before Mark leaves, as he often does, Elvis will be having the last word. Maybe in his early years, 
that may not have been for the wrong reasons. But how much we have but we know how much he had turned his life around with his acting, his charity work and being a father. He gave us all so many memories and stories that will carry on for many years to come. And will keep your name alive forever. Good! So I asked, so I asked, I actually asked last night, I asked your friends for a story to add into the speech, I thought you The stories that came back, well, they definitely weren't for today. <laughs> <laughs> So here's a little, mild story I'll share with you now. One day Mark came, came home with a giraffe under his arms. It's a baby giraffe. Telling us all it cost £15,000. £15,000. For one of us to find out, we looked on eBay, checked it out, it cost £15,000. <laughs> but that was not. His reply was for a story. Well, it could have been. <laughs> that was not. He told his stories tenfold. <laughs> On the day of his passing, everybody went to his house. And his next door neighbour's son had to be brought home from school in tears. All the lads sat there and spoke to him. The young man said he idolised him and wanted to be just like him. An impression he had on a lot of people. I personally would like to thank everybody who has made this day very special a send off fit for the king. Everybody. He left us with a massive hole in our art and in our city. He will always be missed by so many. Last page, I promise. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the final curtain call on the Winchy Show. This speech, by the way, Tom Mandel got jealous. It was, it was me and him that put it together. Have a great time. time. We all are so proud to call him our friend. So whether you know him as Winx, Winxy, Winx a poo, Mom Marky Winks, Jaws, Dad, Son, Brother, Uncle, or even Veronica. Somebody knows why we need to know today. Or even plain old Mark. Rest in peace for now. From the scruffiest man you knew, and all your friends. Your legacy will never be forgotten. I just won't be able to get it out. And I think Elvis has already said it perfectly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But what I will say about my friend, about our friend, is that most of the time it really was just one big winksy show. And I, for one, love every single minute of it, my friend. I think if everyone would join me in a 40 second applause, a second for every year of our friend's life, Let's go. I think that would be just perfect. Absolutely. What a show, my brother. And fair play to my friend.
There's one last thing I want to say before we go. When we were on the parade earlier on, there was an old lady at the side of the uh, truck. She was 80 years old. In her words, I've lived here for 80 years. 80 years. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Mark will be now taken to his final resting place. I can ask the gentleman to come forward. Ladies and gentlemen outside, can you please clear the way as Mark leaves the chapel? Yes. Yeah.